So we're working on day 23 today, Wednesday, December 9th. You are given an example at the top of your first page for day 23, but I went ahead and made sure that you had another example so you could see it kind of happening twice. You could see it happening for a different type of sentence because one sentence just kind of goes straight through. And then actually number one right here has that transitional phrase comma at the beginning. So two different sentence patterns happening here. Looking at example one, I'm inside of PDF Escape. So PDF Escape is different than the other programs I've been using. PDF Escape allows me to do just ever so slightly a little bit more to a PDF. Kind of can't throw this into Microsoft Word the same way and still do the same thing. So that's why it looks different. But anyway, PDF Escape will let me type into the document. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do so that way I, I don't spend an excessive amount of time trying to write out the answers using a mouse. Example one says, I unintentionally put the pen into my shirt pocket that was leaking. So the way that it's written out now, example one is saying that the pocket was leaking. When we know from common sense, from just reason, just from living life, we know that it's the pen that they mean is leaking. I unintentionally put the pen into my shirt pocket that was leaking. So we want to make sure that it doesn't sound like the pocket was the thing that was leaking. And we want to make sure that we clarify that the pen was the thing that was leaking. I unintentionally put the pen that was leaking into my shirt pocket. So what they do is they just clarify what's doing what action and what is acting in such a way. The reason that example one initially originally sounds incorrect is because it has a dangling or misplaced modifier. The modifier is that was leaking. So what they've done is they have moved the misplaced modifier to right here, the phrase that was leaking from the end to somewhere in the middle to fix it. So they have moved the misplaced modifier to where it belongs. I know that the annotation there, the freehand annotation there is pretty poor. Can't really do much about that. We know, <laughs> we learned from Zoom meetings that it's very difficult to mark this up with a mouse. I might be able to get a better way to annotate soon. All they've done is they've just moved it. I unintentionally put the pen that was leaking into my shirt pocket. So that clarifies what was leaking. And then we look at number one, singing an ancient spiritual song. The tourists listen to the old people of the village. So when you have a transition like this, when you've got something, something, comma, and it, it happens right here too, something, something, comma, something, something, comma, <laughs> or it's actually just backwards, it's comma, something, something, something. Whenever you have that, the closest thing to it is what's completing that action inside of that transition. And what I mean is, singing an ancient spiritual song, the tourists, okay, so the tourists is the closest thing to this transition. So it sounds like the tourists are the one that are singing. So they are not. The people that are actually singing are the old people of the village. The tourists are the ones that are listening. So we have to move the misplaced modifier to the correct place to clarify who is actually singing. So from common sense, we know it's the old people of the village singing an ancient spiritual song. So we need to fix it and clarify it. While the old people of the village were singing an ancient spiritual song, the tourists listened, is one way to fix it. There are, of course, exceptions. There are, of course, modifications that you can make. There are, of course, multiple ways to deal with this. The easiest one I thought we could use would be, while the old people of the village were singing an ancient spiritual song, the tourists listened. So that clarifies that yes, the tourists are listening and that yes, the old people are the ones that are singing. And then I've seen a few of these so far and we just need to be very clear as to what is being described with these extra phrases. We watch the sunset over the Pacific Ocean. Well, what here in this list essentially of items would be vast and calm. Well, really the only thing that could be vast and calm would be the ocean. We're not saying that we, the people, are vast and calm, 
They're not saying that at all. They're not saying that the sunset is vast and calm. They're saying that the ocean is vast and calm. So we need to change it to clarify what exactly we are describing. As it stands, because there's here's this modifier, and then here's the closest object to it, the closest thing to it. It says that the people are vast and calm, when that just sounds in, incredibly odd. And we know through common sense that that's not what they mean. But we still need to correct it to clarify our writing and strengthen our writing. So we have to change it to, we would of course just be like capital letter. Make sure you are using capital letters and end marks. Don't trip up just because you don't remember to use your end mark or your capital letter because it will be counted wrong because you're not clarifying and strengthening your writing by not including very basic grammatical standards of a capital letter at the beginning and end marks at the end. You need to make sure that you're doing that. We are so far beyond not doing that. So make sure you are doing that. So we're going to do a capital letter, of course. So instead of me drawing that out, actually, let me use PDF Escape for what I intended to use it for. So PDF Escape will allow me to do this. And I will change it to we, capital W, watch the sunset. We watch the sunset over the Pacific Ocean, okay? And we want to describe it more specifically. And now we have moved the modifier, fast and calm. Instead of at the beginning, it comes right before, right next to the thing that we are describing. Um, and here's a, a different example of that modifier coming at the end with its comma. The crowd cheered as the runner rounded the bases, stomping and whistling loudly. Could the runner be stomping and whistling loudly? Yeah, likely no. So we need to change it to make sure that stomping and whistling loudly is modifying the crowd and not the runner because that modifier is so close to the runner right here, it's modifying the runner currently. But that's not what the writer intended. That's not what we intend. We know that from common sense. We change it to placing it near the object that we want to modify. Stomping and whistling. We move it to the object that we want to, to modify. We move it closest to that object, generally speaking. Could there be exceptions? Absolutely. Generally, we want to keep that in mind that that's what we're doing. Stomping and whistling loudly, comma, the crowd cheered. If we're looking at number four, the hurricane finally hit the coast that had stalled out in the ocean. The coast is close to that modifier, that modifier being this phrase right here. The coast is not going to stall. The only thing that can stall is the hurricane. So you have to move that modifier closer to the hurricane to modify that object, the hurricane twitching its tail and meowing hungrily, the man. So this is saying that the man is twitching its tail and meowing hungrily as it stands. So you have to change this misplaced modifier. You have to move it. You have to move it closest to the kitten because it is modifying the kitten. That's what it's intended to do. So you have to move it closer to the kitten so it's no longer modifying the man. The woman gave one of the cones to a man who had bought two ice cream cones. Well, the man did not buy two ice cream cones. The woman did. So you have to clarify that she's the one who bought two ice cream cones because she She's the one that has one to give. So you have to move this modifier closer to the woman. You don't have to put this inside of commas. In this scenario, having commas around that modifier isn't going to change anything. The difference is that if you have commas around your modifier, then it's extra information. It's not necessary, it's just a little bit extra. And for this case it's okay to have that. You don't have to though because if you take your commas away then you are defining which woman you're talking about. So for this case it doesn't matter because we don't have any context to say that there is a different woman who did not buy two ice cream cones. So it doesn't really matter if you use commas here or not. To learn that difference and really wrap your head around it, commas around a modifier versus commas not around a modifier like that, then you just have to use it in practice. For right here, it doesn't matter. No meaning is lost, no information is lost. And that's another thing that I've seen with a few of these 
submissions is that students are choosing to cut out content to reach a clarified response. Don't cut out content. You need to keep that content in there because it's that extra content, those modifiers that you're moving around. You're moving misplaced modifiers and you need to move it around not remove it, not take it away, but move it to where it belongs and do so correctly. Capital letter at the beginning and mark at the end. And then if it's appropriate to have a comma near it or around it, then yes, do that. Make sure you're doing that clearly. As we walked among the trees, we could hear the songs of the birds towering and ancient. Okay, now this is the modifier, towering and ancient. This is the modifier. It is close to the object birds. Birds are not towering. They're not that big, but trees are. So you have to move that closer to trees. You have to make sure that your reader knows that you are modifying the object trees. Rolling down the hill backwards, the man ran after his car. Okay, the way it stands is this modifier is modifying the man. This sentence as it stands is saying that the man is rolling down the hill backwards. When we know from common sense that the writer meant to modify the car. So you have to move this modifier rolling down the hill backwards. You have to move that modifier closest to the car. Clarify the object that is rolling down the hill backwards. When she fell off the tricycle, the woman comforted the little girl. The woman did not fall off the tricycle, the little girl did. So you have to move that modifier closer to that little girl. The purple Martin house is now occupied by sparrows that we put up last fall. Okay, this one's a little bit odd if you don't know what a Martin house is. A Martin house is a birdhouse. But a Martin house, a birdhouse is something you put up. It's something you set up for birds. So they're saying that they set up the birdhouse. So that's your modifier right there that we put up last fall. That's your modifier. It's too close to sparrows. So right now as it stands, it's modifying sparrows. It needs to modify the birdhouse. It needs to modify this guy right here. So you got to move it closer. I had to switch screens because PDF Escape can't render the second page for some reason. I had to switch to Internet Explorer, so that's why it looks different. Example one, after an exciting day at the amusement park, dinner at home was relaxing. These are scenarios likely where you need to clarify a lot more. For page two, it's not about just moving a modifier around. You might not need to move these. For this one, it's about adding an object to be modified. So this is not a scenario where you need to remove content. Keep all of your content, keep all of the actions that are happening, and add something to be modified. Add people to be modified, add objects to be modified accurately, clearly so. So that's exactly what happens. Don't remove your content. Watch what they do here in example one. After an exciting day at the amusement park, dinner at home was relaxing. So this right here, as it stands, originally so, is saying that dinner had an exciting day at the amusement park. So we need to add in people, objects, who could realistically have had an exciting day at the amusement park. After an exciting day at the amusement park, we had a relaxing dinner at home. So they add that content. They don't take away anything, they're adding things. And they actually didn't even have to move anything. They just had to slightly modify just a little bit of verb tense and then add in people. While waiting in line, we heard the music start. Don't remove anything, you can modify verb tense. Don't remove anything. While waiting in line, we heard the music start. That would clarify what is waiting in line, who is waiting in line. It doesn't have to be we, it could be anybody. It could be while waiting in line, he heard the music start. While waiting in line, the crowd heard the music start. It doesn't matter who or what, as long as it's realistic, you can clarify it, it becomes clear. There is an object there to be modified that works. Before visiting my grandparents, the flat tire had to be fixed. As number two stands, it's saying that the flat tire is visiting my grandparents. So I have to add in an object 
that matches up with my modifier to clarify my sentence. Before visiting my grandparents, I had to fix the flat tire. It doesn't have to be me. It could be someone else. Before visiting my grandparents, he had to fix the flat tire. Don't remove your content. We're still visiting the grandparents. We're still fixing a flat tire. You can modify verb tense, add an object. Don't remove your content. To teach someone to drive, This one's odd in all kinds of ways because technically to teach someone to drive is modifying patience in a calm manner. So adding in a person could clarify what needs to be modified. So you can simplify this down to patience in a calm manner are important when teaching someone to drive. You just want to make sure that you're not saying that patience in a calm manner are the ones, are the objects teaching someone to drive. You want to make sure that you're clarifying that a person is the object that can do that. Your third page here, each of the following sentences contains a dangling or misplaced modifier. They mean exactly the same thing. A dangling modifier is one that is in an incorrect place. It is oddly modifying something that shouldn't be modified the way that it is. On the lines provided, rewrite each sentence so that its meaning is clear. The hikers were prepared to take photos of butterflies walking along the path. Walking along the path is your modifier. And as it stands, it is incredibly close to butterflies. So it is saying that butterflies are walking along the path. When butterflies are not likely to do that, they can, but they are not likely to do that. What this writer intended, they intended to describe the hikers walking along the path. So they move their modifier to the beginning to make it close to the thing that they actually want to modify. Walking along the path comma, the hikers were prepared to take photos of butterflies. After next week, our supervisor selected two trainees to assume regular duties. It sounds incredibly odd straight off because the modifier is in the wrong place. This isn't saying that after next week, the supervisor will do this, that the supervisor will select two trainees. That's not what's happening. They intended to say that two trainees will assume regular duties after next week. So you've got to move that modifier to describe what the two trainees are going to do, not what the supervisor did or what the supervisor will do, but to modify what the two trainees will do after next week. You can say, our supervisor selected two trainees to assume regular duties after next week. You just flip it backwards. But you make sure that when you read it aloud to yourself, when you read it aloud to yourself is exactly what you should be doing. When you go back and read it, that it makes perfect logical sense. This one's pretty much um, common sense, something that you've heard probably a thousand times in your life. These are still modifiers, but these modifiers are double negatives. So it's just something that you have to watch out for. You've got your example given to you by the worksheet, by the textbook company, and then I went ahead and I gave you number one. So that way you could see another example of what not to do, another example of what to fix. In exercise A, in the following sentences, eliminate any double negatives by crossing out incorrect words and writing the correct forms above them if necessary. So if necessary could be key and then making sure that you are making corrections is key example one I couldn't see anyone around to help me would be your correct version if you said I couldn't see no one around to help me sounds first off incredibly odd the meaning would not be clear I could not see no one so that means actually that you see people around you so you clarify you correct it by saying I couldn't see anyone around to help me, which means there's no one around to help you. So then I gave you number one, we were so tired that we couldn't barely put one foot in front of the other. If you said we couldn't barely put one foot in front of the other, then you're saying that you're walking fine. So you need to correct it to we were so tired that we could barely put one foot in front of the other. So you just got to watch out for that. Be careful of that because a double negative changes your meaning to something positive. Just like in math when you have a negative times negative equals a positive. So maybe that's something you could consider while you're doing this. If that confuses you, then forget I said it. Exercise B. On the line 
commands provided, rewrite each of the following sentences. Rewrite each of them. Rewrite each of them, correct each of them. That means work on all of them. Rewrite each of the following sentences to correct any double negatives and other errors in usage. There wasn't hardly anybody on the beach early this morning. That's kind of the way we talk, but it's not grammatically correct. The way that we talk shouldn't be the standard for how we write standard academic English. There wasn't hardly anybody on the beach early this morning needs to be corrected to hardly anybody was on the beach early this morning. So that word wasn't, that word wasn't becomes was because hardly is a negative and wasn't is a negative. So what you've got so far in the original sentence is a double negative. So you change it to hardly anybody was on the beach this morning. They're saying that you need to correct other errors in usage and we're shooting for standard academic English. So we take on this guy. So basically right here it's saying there isn't nobody come up with that idea before is what that's saying. Reading that from a southern West Virginia perspective, I know exactly what this person means. So it makes it even easier for me to write it out in standard academic English. No one has come up with that idea before. So that's what you're doing with day 23. I have full confidence that you can complete it all in its entirety and do very, very well. So that's our Wednesday. You can obviously contact me, complete your work on time, turn it in as soon as you can, get a score, get feedback. If your score is low, resubmit it for a better score.